Next, I would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to the person who is known for untiring efforts, humility, and who is none other than our department head, Dr. M. Rajshagran, sir, for this function. So next, I would like to welcome all the participants who are in online with us and watching the YouTube live stream across India. And last but not least, I would like to welcome my all department staff members who are an integral part of this college and, how, and have always supported each other in making this FDP as a successful one. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your brief introduction. With this introduction, I would like to hand over the session to the chief guest. Welcome, sir. Fleming, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, is my voice uh, audible? Yes, sir. Please. Okay, okay. So good morning, friends. Uh, I think uh, this is a very important day, and uh, I'm thankful to the Almighty God who gave us, uh, you know, an opportunity to see another day in our lives. When the whole world is going through a very, um, you know, devastating state, I would call it, and uh, a very uncertain period, I think if we woke up in today, uh, today's morning, right? Today morning, if we have woken up, it's simply the grace of God. And uh, I'm really thankful to the Almighty God that He has kept us safe, and we has given us one more day. So I, I'm very thankful for this opportunity that is given to me from this wonderful institution. I'm also thankful, especially to Danalakshmi, ma'am, and uh, Vigneshwar and sir. So today, uh, the subject that we're going to deal with is a very important subject, friends, because the world is going through a state of uncertainty. And uh, we are not sure because none of us have traveled through this path till now, right? I think uh, even the most senior most, I see a lot of very senior experienced people on the call. I'm sure none of us on the call would have gone through a similar experience like this in our entire life. So this has to be dealt with very sensitively and, you know, very strategically. So today, friends, uh, though the subject that I'm going to cover is a little vast, I will try to you know, make sure that we will see a little bit of everything and that before the end of the program, you know, you are loaded with a bit of confidence to face the uncertain world ahead. None of us know, you know, what is in store tomorrow, but still, you know, we can be prepared, you know, just like how Dr. Stephen Covey says, not sure if you've heard about Dr. Stephen Covey, he's the author of the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. What he says is, he says, you know, you focus on your circle of influence and not on your circle of concern. You know, I recently spoke with one of my friend who was extremely depressed, right? So whenever I've been down in my life, I've reached out to him because I've always seen him to be a very resilient person, right? He was a very confident person. But he, when I called him up recently, he just broke down and he said, surprised because I never expected such a very strong personality to break down. Now, this is what is, you know, going on. A lot of people who are super strong, mentally strong, who have had very high levels of confidence are on the verge of giving up. So when I start off this call, friends, I would like to start off by saying that, you know, the moment we give up, that's when we lose friends, right? I think we should gather up above all these, this learning that we're going to see today about everything that we're going to see about different strategies on handling, right? About what we need to learn, what are the skills that are needed, you know, keeping all that aside. The most important thing is we need resilience. Resilience is a very important thing. Not sure if you've heard about this, the oak tree that you find in the jungle, right? So every time it seems it storms, the oak tree, oak tree actually gets stronger because you know the roots go even deeper it gets shaken and the roots go even deeper into the ground i think this is a time we have to be like the oak tree and you know it, it doesn't mean that you know we don't feel depressed at all there are depressive moments but we need to shake it off like dust and come out of it friends or else you know we will be you know they say that you know the biggest walls in our life are inside our mind so we have to, you know, be careful about our thought process, which could be the biggest enemy for us. I think the biggest enemy in our life is not COVID, but our own mind. 
we need to shatter that thought process that's probably very negative and start seeing the positive side of covid i'm not sure how many of you have seen the positive side of covid did you know that covid has brought in a lot of positive changes in the world but no news channel will tell you that isn't it friends very sadly no news channel will talk about the positive side of covid i would like to say a few things about the positive side of covid so that you will feel good that there is you know something good happening as well in fact the good that is happening because of covid is much better than what is you know negatively portrayed in media all right so if you see friends i'm not sure if you heard about this but the ozone layer has almost healed the ozone layer is the layer that protects the atmosphere from harmful uv rays right from entering into our earth's atmosphere it's healing so that's a great sign that something positive is happening it's not just that look at this world we are getting connected right are we not getting connected i have a neighbor who's who who lives opposite my house who is you know who's always i've always seen him you know very angry on dogs you know the street dogs he just throws stones and you know he keeps chasing them but recently i have you know seen a change in his beha- behavior a complete paradigm shift i would call it you know i've seen him keeping a water bowl in front of his house and he's calling dogs and throwing biscuits you know the 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 empathy or the goodness in us has started to come out slowly so this period is actually changing all of us many of us are are you know exploring new talents i'm sure some of you would have found out new talents in y- yourself some of you might have been a great plumber some of you might some of us might be a great carpenter some of us might be a great cook so all those good things in us are coming out these days right so these days are to be seen positively friends all right and we are getting more time to connect with our family a lot of you know positive things to covid is there and let me tell you with that friends the world is never going to be the same again all right i hope all of you will agree to that the world is not going to you know be the same again it's going to go through a complete transition in fact it's going through a complete transition now and it's going to continue to go th- go through that transition in fact covid didn't bring that transition friends if you see the disruption that is happening in today's world it is not just covid that brought it covid has just accelerated it even before covid actually stepped in you know the whole business landscape was going through a complete shift i'm sure you would have known about it you know the uh, the it industry and several other industries were going through a lot of shift in their way of operating all right so the, the way of operating uh, have changed the operating systems have changed their uh, process methodologies have changed and covid is going to accelerate that it's going to further all right uh, accelerate that it's called the age of disruption i hope you've all heard of this word called disruption in fact in many of our conferences uh, conferences across corporate we uh, fumble across this word disruption and it keeps happening again and again because i think that's the key word that we're going to talk about in future very soon i think there will be even skills that will be required to handle disruption so so i would uh, i would like to present a small presentation friends i have it ready so i'm going to share it with you see uh, right so i'm sure it will be uh, it will be helpful for all of us right so sir are you able to view my ppt sir right it's buffering uh, yes sir yes one okay so i hope friends uh, the title what i have uh, thought about today based on again it is in alignment with the college's uh, you know theme post covid approach to imparting knowledge managing self and transforming individuals that's what is the topic that i thought about i hope you're all able to see the screen and uh, i will take you uh, through this friends i will walk you through the deck so this is extremely important this session i hope will be beneficial for all of us so covid is taking us through a heavily disrupted state the world is not going to be the same again so how different are things going to be i'm going to show you something very interesting friends all right uh, interesting quote 
by by this person um, i'm sure all of us have heard about him his name is charles darwin and charles darwin he said this in the year 1809 all right several hundred years back it is almost you know it is the it is not the strongest of the species that survives right not the most intelligent but the one most responsive to change all right so he was talking charles darwin was talking about nature and species right but just see how relevant this quote is for today's world look at this friends it is not the strongest of the species that survives let me tell you something in the eco in nature there are several organisms and several species that have not managed to survive all these years the reason is because they didn't respond to change what did nature do with them nature just threw them out of its system all right so this quote is very important for us because unless we respond to change all right we can't just be spectators watching this change we have to participate in this change if we don't participate we will just be left behind friends right i hope you are able to understand the importance of this you know this quote it's extremely important that you know we respond to change how do we respond to change is what we will see today and what can be done because you know we have to first of all manage manage ourselves really well only then will we be able to transform so you're all in a very reputed uh, you know friends uh, position because a position of a lecturer a professor or a teacher i think it has the the most crucial mandate compared to any other job or profession in this world right so unless we are transformed you can't transform others unless you are really uh, getting insights and keeping yourself you know keeping yourself improved how can you really improve others that's a big question that we should keep asking ourselves so it's important for us to respond to change you know the teaching methodologies are going to be different in the coming years it's all going to go through a change right so we're going to take a small glimpse at what what all is going to happen and how can we be prepared for this change i hope all of you are able to see the slide vuka vignesh varan sir are you able to see this vuka slide yes sir okay yes, sir. okay sir thank you so friends this concept on vuka all right this concept on vuka existed in a army college all right in the us and it's considered today as one of those very significant learning across colleges corporates right vuka stands for you know it's a very complex world right vuka stands for volatility right uncertainty complexity and ambiguity right so if you see friends all these factors are there present today right what is volatility the the rate of change you don't know what's going to happen next you know everything is changing you know people working in uh, in corporates never ever imagine that you know we will get shut down in homes and be working from home so that's what is happening many of our processes are getting changed all right it's not just about corporates it's about colleges it's about uh, institutions it's about various you know uh, even the hotel industry hospitals every fragment of our society is going through immense change friends right i hope all of you will agree to that next you see is a is an element of uncertainty right none of us are clear about what the future holds or neither the present holds right there's a there's a sense of uncertainty right and then there is also a, a sense of complexity where you know there are multiple key decision factors that needs to be thought about you know you can't just go by one single thought process you'll have to think multiple things you need to have a forecasting mind on planning for the future well without having anything you know clear that's also there there's a level of ambiguity all right that's because there is a lack of clarity you know of anything so there is no clarity around there is a sense of ambiguity that that we see so all this is adding up to the state of disruption in today's world friends right so is this good well i mean we are not going to look at the uh, you know the negative side because i see a lot of people talking about you know economy falling and all that so let's not focus on areas that we don't have an influence on friends all right for that we have 
we have uh, you know economists we have business analysts we have a lot of profound professionals who will take care of that that's not our cup of tea what we need to do is how can we make our lives effective and because we are people who are responsible for the effectiveness of others lives every person on this call i'm sure is going to transform you're a transformer right you're like a catalyst you are responsible for the future of several thousands and thousands of individuals so you're very important people that's why you know this call is extremely important for me it's extremely important because i'm addressing very important people on this call all of you are responsible for even the growth of this country and in in various ways you are actually influencing individuals who are going to be future citizens of this country you know holding prime positions maybe positions of lead, leadership and you know various other responsible positions in the government and in the private sectors right so this is just for an understanding friends yes yes sir sir can you make your ppt for me what is that sir full screen please oh full screen is it okay sir okay yeah yeah thank you is it visible now sir sir is it visible now yes sir thank you okay thank you thank you sir, yes, sir. Thank, thank you so so it's important that we enlarge our vision all right just like like how we put a full screen ppt what happens we are able to see everything clearly right so in the same way we need to enlarge our vision friends we can't be looking at what's happening today all right we need to have a a focused mind on the future also and be prepared for it so today we're going to look at those factors all right so keep this aside this is just for your understanding if you want i would request all of you to take notes if possible all this is available online right and most of this material that i have picked up is based on harvard research friends all right so you can trust this material we are not going to discuss anything that is hypothetical in nature okay all right going ahead now there is an old way there's a new way are we willing to leave behind the old way is a question because it's not always easy friends right it's not always easy to you know leave behind the old way you know because when computers were introduced i still remember when computers were introduced many of the government offices struggled to take that computer they were still comfortable only with the typewriters <laughs> all right so it's very funny right when when there is a progress happening people are not willing to give up because they are stuck in a old way of doing thing so friends i would suggest that we need to have a mental shift here there needs to be a transformation happening on a mental level i hope all of you will agree to this right so do you really like change friends is a question i would like to ask all of you do you really like change think about it you don't have to answer right do we really like change if you're looking at it from a very psychological perspective change is not that very comfortable for any of us all right just imagine that you know you're going back home maybe you're going to office and then coming back home probably someone at home has changed the position of your bed and your pillow and everything would you really like it <laughs> i'm sure you will go and rearrange it and put it in the same way right that's because i mean we are like that right our brain is more orchestrated to be feel comfortable you know with what we are going you know with what the present scenario but friends we cannot be comfortable like that because the the current scenario is going to change the current scenario is not going to be the same all right it's going to go through a shift my a humble request is friend that you be on mute so that we don't uh, you know we can make the most of this call right okay so there is a old way that we need to leave behind and we need to pick up a new way all right so we are still not you know sure about what is the way we need to pick up but still we need to be prepared and we need to have some bit of a preparation in approaching the new way right for that the most important thing is your mental shift or your preparedness or your ability to you know let go of the old way and look for a new way you can't be holding on to something old and saying that you know i want something new everybody wants to improve i saw this beautiful post somewhere everybody likes to be successful everybody wants you know good changes to happen but they're not going to they're not willing to let go of their old ways 
the reason is they're so comfortably caught up in all those old ways so friends i think it's time that you know we start to you know rethink so many things in our life and start to take new decisions or else this change is going to affect us very much if you're not prepared for it but if you are prepared like the oak tree if you're going to be prepared and strong like the oak tree with deep roots inside with a lot of learning and a lot of inputs right like like this conference you know you should have a lot of conferences you should attend a lot of learning programs keep yourself informed and and you know pick up new ways of doing things then i think we'll be in a better position to handle change you know i've read this somewhere friends change is hard at the beginning messy in between and gorgeous towards the end all right i just loved it i read it somewhere it says change is hard at the beginning messy in between and gorgeous towards the end so maybe it's a it's a bit of messy now but let's hope that it's all going to you know fall in place right this situation will definitely go away friends i'm sure right this will go off covid is going to go off all right these situations will change but the world will never be the same again so are we prepared to you know participate in this change is a big question so if you see that beautiful picture there which has a transition now is the chance i think god has given us for us to change this is a very correct time and it is very imperative that you know we demonstrate that willingness to change or else it's going to be very difficult friends i'm going to show you what happens if you don't change all right and if you're going to be caught up with all our old ways of doing things we're going to be you know I, i we may not even survive right survive in the sense i'm not saying about living but by way of our profession and by way of our knowledge i think we will have to really you know look forward to you know friends participating in this change i'm going to give you some very nice insights on that based on harvard research so how do we go about this all right okay so not sure if you've read read this book friends there is a book written by this guy called joffrey moore he is written on the subject on escape velocity it's an amazing book please get a copy of this it's available in amazon it's called escape velocity and i think all of us would have learned about escape velocity in our school days so what is escape velocity is nothing but you know uh, the minimum speed required for an object to escape the gravitational force and you know reach space so every rocket or anything space shuttle or anything that has to be launched into space you know they have to de- you know develop their escape velocity so joffrey moore in his book he talks about how organizations should develop this escape velocity all right so there are gravitational forces in our life that tries to pull us down and i'll tell you something friends covid should not become another gravitational force all right already it is probably trying to you know the media is trying to portray it so negatively you know hyping it for their trp and all that and if we are going to you know succumb to all this you know false things that are going to be shown i think we will be going through an unnecessary mental trauma you know and i think we will have to rise above this friends we will have to develop the escape velocity to go above right what's the the current situation so for us to go above the current situation where are we focusing are we focused on the news channels are we focused in planning about our future let me tell you friends all right i can give you the assurance because i connect with a lot of educationists a lot of researchers across the world and i've heard it from a lot of people that this stage will pass this is a temporary phase you know why i'm saying with that much of confidence change is the only thing that cannot change right so i know covid also has to change there will be a full stop for covid the world is not going to you know be seeing this forever but we should not be the same we should also change along with this or else there's no use you know when we go through pain there are two things that's happening either 
we can cry about it and sit simply or we can you know transform we can transition as a better professional we can transition as a better human being i think pain produces enough of that experience for us to change so this is a chance friends so just like how joffrey moore has recommended organizations to you know not you know look at their past maybe you know sometimes we are thinking of things that probably you know has led us to failure now for example i want to say this friends you know i have failed in my 10th standard all right so you know that this for multiple reasons i could not get through because i was not really good at maths and you know a lot of things happened honestly i didn't have the knowledge to even tie my shoe lace till my 8th standard my dad used to tie it for me so doesn't mean that you know you know things can just remain the same at some point of time you know by the grace of god and you know a little bit of effort from my end things have changed the tables have turned so we have to develop that escape velocity and rise above our situation friends and not you know talk about the situation think about it get depressed and you know and be there always we need to think forward we need to think what what's the road ahead what can i do forward what can i do ahead how how do i need to plan my future so don't stop planning for your future i, I see in my friend circle so in my friend circle i've seen some of them who have you know started to you know even give away their dreams that will be the most cruelest thing you ever do friends situation is probably against us right probably we are seeing the situation to be against us why are we also you know being against us why are we partaking along with the situation and getting to be against us i think we should rise above this so joffrey moore's thought process is very simple he says don't partake with the situation in the sense don't give hands with the situation and you know point out the gun on your own head rather develop this escape velocity to go above the situation is what he says and i think it's a very profound thought process all right so i would highly recommend friends that you get a copy of this book developing escape velocity in fact it's titled as escape velocity right and you will get a lot of insights on how to look beyond what is you know permanently painful you know look beyond right so you know i've shown a picture there on the screen it's a plant all right look at that plant it is grown through concrete or maybe tar right look at the resilience and the strength of that plant if the plant that is so fragile is able to grow through such a you know a rough you know environment if it can just sprout out like that how much more can you and i sprout out friends how much more you and i can come out of this and be a blessing for this entire world all right so let's not give up the moment we give up we lose that's that's it so i think we should not give up we should hold on there is enough of hope they say this every cloud has a silver lining i hope all of all of us have heard of that so we'll go forward and look at other things friends this is a very important slide i want to highlight here of course this is based on research right i'm sure all of you would have heard about fortune 500 companies if you look back 52 percentage of the fortune 500 companies since 2000 are simply gone can you imagine fortune 500 companies are you know they are on a certain level because they have achieved a lot and they are they have beaten up all bench, benchmarks to actually get into that list of being in a fortune 500 but imagine 52 percentage of the fortune 500 firms have just vanished from 2000 either they have been acquired or they have simply you know disappeared can you imagine friends so why is this happening so why do you think this happens think about it all right have an introspection all your questions you can park it towards the end friends we will have sufficient time to you know talk about your questions you can uh, for that we will have a separate time now you can keep introspecting all right and you can think about just imagine fortune 500 companies have just disappeared you know why they disappeared you can recall 
the beautiful quote by Charles Darwin. I hope you remember that. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, but the one most responsive to change. Right? So, one example if I have to give, there are a lot of examples. Uh, well, uh, think of Nokia. Right? Everybody on this call would have used Nokia. In fact, that was my first phone when I got it in college. Right? And uh, I, it's it's such a memorable time, right? My mind is just about to go back there. Then I'm not going to go there, but still, you know, it was a it was a it was an amazing company, and they did really well. They were pioneers in mobile mobile phones. What happened today? They are nowhere. Their competitors have gone far ahead of them, right? The reason is because they didn't respond to change. They didn't. They were not proactive. They didn't, you know, stick to the current trend. I would request all of you to be on mute, friends. All right. Thank you so much. So, you know, they were actually not prepared for change. They didn't participate in the change. And hence, they just vanished. Of course, they're trying to struggle to come back. But I know their co competitors have gone far ahead of them. So, we shouldn't make the same mistake. All right, friends. So, we should be careful that, you know, the same mistake that Nokia did should not be repeated. It's like a case study for us, actually, right? So what are we supposed to do? This is a very important slide. I want you to look at this slide, friends. It's based on a lot of research work. So participating in the radical change of the business framework. So you can replace business framework with global framework, okay? Because it's not just the business world that's changing. Hospital industry is changing. Hotel industry is changing. Colleges, schools. Every private institution, government institutions, government sectors, everything is going through this change. If we are not participating in this change, we will be left behind. So what do we do? There are three things that we can do, friends. All right? The three things that we can do are, the first thing we need to do is, we need to accept the change. All right? Don't look at this like an illusion, friends. So some of some of my friends who are very superficial, all right. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are artists because I I paint, so I connect with a lot of artists. They're very creative people. <laughs> I was recently talking to one of my friends who says, "Well, COVID is an illusion. COVID is Maya. COVID is an illusion. No, it is an illusion. It is not an illusion. It is a reality, all right." So, we, we can't go by that, friends. It's not an illusion. This is a reality. It's happening really in front of our eyes. You have to believe this, that it's happening. We have to welcome it and agree to what's happening. Right? We have to accept the change. In the sense, what are the changes that are happening because of COVID? Maybe some of your processes in your institutions are changing. Some of you have already started online classes. I'm not sure about a college, but schools have already started doing that. Virtual sessions. You know, they have started connecting over, you know, that's the change. You need to accept the change. You can't say that, no, 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 I am not in for technology. I would like to go face to face with my children or students, right? It's not possible. So we need to accept the change and probably take in, you know, this virtual way of connecting. You know, some of our class, you know, the classroom sessions might go through a little change. Right in future, I'm sure there will be a blended approach is what we are heading to. It will be both face-to-face -face and virtual. And uh, yes, so we are, we should be willing to accept this and agree to this change and welcome this change. So friends, assist change, you're not on the right side. Okay, you're on the wrong side. So you should remember this, you should be willing to accept the change that your college is trying to bring about that your institution heads are trying to bring about. If you resist it, it is not for the good. Because I remember, I'm still quoting it again, I think I said this earlier, a lot of institutions I remember when, when computers were brought in, they were not willing to take it. I'm sure many of you will remember this. Because they were only comfortable with typewriters. Right? So, we'll have to, you know, friends, forego certain things. We need to leave behind some things and, you know, accept the second thing, after acceptance, all right, you can't say that I'm accepting, I'm accepting, and be quiet. You will have to adapt. How do we adapt? 
So in order to adapt, we have to redesign ourselves, friends. We have to alter ourselves. There has to be a complete upgradation that needs to happen, right? So we know that our, our phones have got software updates, Android updates, and we update it very often or else what happens? The system will not be able to function effectively. So we have to redesign ourselves. So where does this redesigning happen? Not externally, friends. Externally is secondary. The altering process or the redesigning process has to first happen in the mind. The mind needs to have a shift. Right? We need to start seeing things from a new perspective. Because things are not going to be the same again. So we need to redesign. What are the courses that are required for us to withstand the coming times? For example, learning agility, right? Not sure if you've heard of that. That's one of the very important things we need to focus on. Are we being agile, right? Are we learning or are we still, you know, dependent on something that we learned several years back? All that will become obsolete, right? There will definitely be a foundation. They will help us, but we have to fill ourselves with new learning or else it's going to be difficult. There are new research going on. A lot of case studies, new case studies have surfaced. Some of the things that we learned several years back, in fact, what I learned in my UG and PG, both while doing visual communication and MBA, has all changed, right? So managerial, you know, management methodologies have changed. It's not the same that was 10 years back. It's different now. So the world is changing. So we need to alter and, you know, become part of that change. And the last thing is integration, friends. So it's not only that we need to adapt, but we need to integrate. Integration happens when you already have that new skill inside. It is an automatic phase, all right? So your effort is needed on an adaptation phase. The moment we adapt, integration happens. Integration happens automatically the moment you adapt. But are you willing to accept is the first question. All right. The moment you accept, you will look forward and you'll be curious to look forward to learning that will help you in altering yourself or redesigning yourself. The moment you redesign, you would have, you know, integrated yourself to the system. All right, friends. Now I've shown a beautiful image on the right, right corner of the page. Right. You see an image of some fishes. Very interestingly, friends, I just wanted to say something. Not sure if you if you know this, but you know there is a primary difference between a live fish and a dead fish. All right, some of you would have probably already heard about it. There is a clear distinction or a bifurcation between a live fish and a dead fish. See, the live fish always, you know, goes against the flow of water against the flow of water the dead fish goes along the flow of water right so honestly friends if you see majority of people today are going in the wrong direction very sadly and somehow we have a feeling that oh majority is going there majority is doing this course majority is still thinking you know everything is fine so let me not you know look forward to change so, major so majority could be doing something wrong. Let's not be part of that majority that is probably not participating in the change. Let's be alive and probably, you know, friends, think of, you know, bringing in new changes in our life. All right. Let's go ahead, friends. I think we have seen enough of this. I hope you got some insights through what was presented. So, look at that. Some beautiful quotes on the slide. Right, some beautiful quotes on this slide. Even if you are on the right track, you will get run over if you just sit there. Will Rogers says that. I'm reading it again, friends. Even if you are on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. You could be thinking that, well, I'm on the right direction. But if you're not moving progressively in the right direction, the right direction will eventually become a wrong direction, friends. Okay, I think I am getting reminded of a story, the tortoise and the rabbit story. I think 
both the tortoise and the rabbit were headed in the right direction i'm sure all of you remember that story but somehow the rabbit was you know a little complacent and again there's a slide for complacency the rabbit was a little complacent he thought his competitor will not catch up so he thought he'll take some bit of rest right some time of rest what happened his competitor went far ahead of him so though we are on the right track or it at least we assume that way let's be careful that you know we are progressively moving forward friends if you don't change anything nothing will change so we have to look at what is this road to change right so i hope you're with me friends and all this is being uh, being heard and you're you're listening to all this because this will help us what do we be learn right so i'm sure i'm also going to all of you when we participate in the in the question question answer time towards the end i am also willing to learn because i know a lot of very seasoned educated people are there on the call with several years of experience so i'm also looking forward to learn if we are not learning if there is a single day in our life we are not learning i think that's the most unsuccessful day friends so learning is something that should happen till we exist or till we are there on planet earth we should be learning right i'm taking you to another subject right this is about personality versus character so and change is required from within us all right change is required required within us so that you know we can also you know be catalysts you know by encouraging change to others well people around us if they have to be transformed and if we really want to influence them in that in transforming them they will have to see change in us so influence so influence is more by actions it's not just by words right so the student community is probably watching all of you how are you handling this change right probably they are watching they they're watching you actually they're watching probably every post of yours every whatsapp conversation of yours and it's and it's so important friends that you know you are i hope everybody is able to hear me sir is my voice audible i see a lot of people messaging that sir i am also seeing at that but it is audible it's audible okay fine sir fine thank you so much so friends uh, people are commenting that they are not audible audible is it okay yeah. so probably they have to check i feel there is good connectivity here okay okay so friends you may also have to can uh, you know check your connectivity and bandwidth right so apologies for that if my voice was right in between uh, disrupted so so this is an important slide i only hope you're able to hear this is very important this is actually from the book the seven habits of highly effective people written by this wonderful man dr steven kave i'm not sure if you've read that book but i would highly recommend that book friends so dr steven kave talks about two things he talks about the personality and the character right so so if i'm going to ask you what is important right so in many of the conferences i have participated earlier i have asked teaching professionals i have asked you know people from corporates which is important i've got very different answers a very common answer i get for this question what is important personality versus character which is important personality or character so many people have told me that it's 50 percentage 50 percentage okay right that is 50 percentage of weightage for personality and 50 percentage of weightage for character but friends it is not so all right character is very important extremely imperative because it has it that's what will hold us especially in times like this you know a character is what is actually holding us right okay friends so it's important for us to focus on what is you know what is internal which is nothing but our character so if i'm going to ask you what is character 
so character is a bundle of so many things it's about our principles our values all are internal it, you can even call it the internal operating system right so dr stephen cave in his book he talks about a tree and he uses a tree as a metaphor to compare personality and character he says personality is like that of the trunk and the leaves of the tree and character is like that of the roots of the tree so you know personality is what you see in a tree the the fruit of the tree and probably the leaves and the branches but the most important thing in a tree is its roots so the fruit of the tree depends on the root of the tree that's what they say if the if the fruit has to be healthy the root has to be healthy and hence character is of important is more important than personality right so personality is what we use to present ourselves which will soon fade off right our skin and everything is going to slowly fade off can i request all of you to be on mute friends someone is not on mute thank you so much so friends can you be on mute uh, ankita and pooja pooja okay thank you so much all right so friends let's not unmute ourselves all right so when you unmute there's a lot of echo out there i request all of you to be on mute cells ma'am this is not fine this is a precious time let's not waste it friends let's be professional on this call it's important because it's an important time for me and i'm willing to you know spend that time because it's going to be a benefit for all of us okay so it's important that we are concerned about our character right more than our personality so let me give you some uh, some ideas friends and thought processes based on research right on how you can be careful so you know how is this character getting formed there are two reasons major reasons why how character gets formed one it happens because of genetic coding right when we were born there is something called as genetic coding that happens the characteristic characteristics of our forefathers our parents and even our forefathers by way of generations right what happens is there is a genetic coding that happens and these codes are transferred on to us not just physically that you know we appear like a grandfather you know we could be carrying some of their characteristic traits so genetic coding is one of the reasons and we can't do much about it right so what that has been coded can be decoded that can be done later on i will tell you how so when you think for example there is probably uh, maybe anger right uh, you know i struggle with anger sometimes so imagine anger is getting coded on us all right maybe your grandfather was a person who always got angry and that anger is got coded on to you into your genes how do you decode it and how do you you know get this out one of the ways you can do it is to consciously correct yourself everything every time when you're about to you know burst you have to consciously reprogram yourself you have to consciously you know restrain yourself you have to co consciously make sure that you're not you know because that's how and slowly you get habituated to that and the initial coding that happened can you know get disrupted it can completely go off right 
that's how what what can be done so whatever is being coded on us through habituation and through repetition actually habituation happen, happens because of rep, rep, repetition when you repeatedly keep consciously working on it you will have victory on it friends another reason why how this character gets formed is because of the circle of influence i'm sure all of you would have heard about it that's why they say you should be careful about the books that you read the people you connect with the movies that you watch and let me tell you something friends among all this the movies that you watch matter the most why because when your brain is seeing something all right the visual visually when you are seeing something the the visuals have so much of power the brain simply catalogs all these visuals and stores it up one of one of the examples i want to say is lightning all right light travels faster than sound visuals are very powerful a picture is worth a thousand words i can say a lot of examples so we should be very choosy and selective about what we are watching look at the news channels how much of negativity they have please don't start your day with such kind of negativity friends because your whole day will get affected because of what you see and maybe what you hear also primarily based on what you see i want to say something it's a very interesting example all right this happened in india in one of a very prime hospital all right so it's a very sensitive example i want to say there was a lady who was admitted on a on an emergency ward she had a complication in a uterus so doctors put her in a very very uh, you know secluded room she was under very critical analysis so she was also carrying at the same time she also went through uh, multiple you know multiple procedures right so there was a lot of uh, critical conditions in her fibrosis and multiple things so she was admitted right from a fifth month and doctors had insisted a family that she has to be in complete observation till the delivery happens so opposite to her bed there was a picture of a chimpanzee not sure why a hospital had the picture of a chimpanzee but you know apparently i, I don't know maybe the chief doctor was fond of wild animals but there was a picture of a chimpanzee opposite this this uh, person's bed so the first thing she sees when she wakes up sometimes is the chimpanzee most of the time she is in a very unconscious state but she wakes up right in front of her on the wall is the chimpanzee late night even if she sleeps or if she wakes up and before she sleeps she sees the chimpanzee ninth month when the baby was delivered doctors were baffled you know why the anatomy or the skull structure of the baby was just like that of the chimpanzee the the bone structure had formed just like that of the chimpanzee why because she was repeatedly watching that image so this is a real life incident friends right so what you keep repeatedly watching can affect you so you should you know not keep watching you know bad things like what's happening on the news and all that you know fires burning somewhere somewhere there is a rape that's happening somewhere there is you know all kind of murder that's happened and it's all so negative and it do you think it affects you yes it affects you it gives you a picture that the world is a very bad place which is wrong that's a wrong perception the world is such a beautiful place it's not a bad place so certain images that you see can give you a projection and it can you know keep making making make keeping you think you know that probably the world is not the right place so what do we do about it we can't go to mars right so the world is a good place it is a good place right so it's it depends on what we are seeing so you know friends there are a lot of nice movies out there so not that i'm asking you not to watch anything on the television right there are a lot of nice movies for example i highly recommend this movie forest gump i'm not sure how many of you watch this movie forest gump it's a tom hanks movie and it's an amazing movie it's one of those most motivational movies i've ever seen movies that can simply you know give you that motivation movies that can simply inspire us movies that will give us that that pump 
you know that that surge of energy watch such movies friends watch movies that will really give you the positive side of life pursuit of happiness is another movie right so there are a lot of nice movies anybody can dance and all that so there are a lot of so so be very selective about what you're watching is what i'm saying friends be very selective don't watch everything out there it can it can completely harm you it can harm you it can harm your thought process it will harm your words it will harm every interaction of yours it will harm even your relationships so let's be very careful on what we watch friends because it affects our thoughts it affects our words it also affects our character all right so we'll have to be extremely careful on what we are watching on a regular basis so so why am i talking about this because i told you change is also needed most importantly from within us so let there be a change in our habits i used to friends in in my past i used to watch a lot of unwanted stuff and i remember all those unwanted stuff is what will govern your thoughts right so we should be very careful once you forgo once you leave that behind you're transitioning and looking towards positivity your life will start to change you will start to change you will see that internally you will start to become more resilient you will develop a, a inner peace and you will also be able to pull others into that peace okay so unless we are peaceful we cannot pull others into our peace unless we are transformed we will not be able to transform others unless we are influenced positively how can we be a positive influence in the lives of the student fraternity so it's important for us to be positively charged friends right so even after the colleges and everything reopens right educational institutions reopen i'm sure the news will continue okay <laughs> covid will leave but news will not change trust me the same news they will keep saying again and again and people will also be interested to watch and you watch such news all right even after the college starts you're watching such a news and getting into your college what is actually happening your mind is filled with all those you know thoughts of uncertainty and negativity and that's the picture you can also portray to your students which will not be ideal friends so you know listening to something very peaceful or seeing something nice or just meditating not seeing anything at all and praying to the lord almighty and you know starting the day is the best thing right so we'll keep going friends uh, we'll keep moving forward i hope this slide was um, useful for all of you but i want to say one more example this is a very important slide friends all right it's one of my favorite also see i live in chennai and opposite my house where i live at ananagar there is a lady who put the small notice on her gate a couple of months back she put this notice saying cats for sale so one of my colleague in my office was already asking for cats so i told him hey this there are these cats so let's go so one saturday we got an appointment she had put a number on the gate along with a paper saying cats for sale so we called her up and we went to her house we took an appointment and we went on a saturday so when she opened her door we got the shock of her life i think i didn't count but minimum there were almost approximately uh, 50 cats 50 okay can you imagine 50 cats it was almost like a cat zoo i was a little scared actually because it gave me a very haunting feeling okay and she asked us to sit down we sat down i wanted to just leave the place as soon as possible because i'm not sure if you've seen the movie catwoman it typically you know something like that and we got uh, you know we sat down i was very uh, you know not feeling very good but i sat down she she asked us would you like to have tea or coffee and we uh, i didn't want anything because i was already petrified my friend was uh, my colleague told her that yes he he wanted to have tea so she went to get tea and when she was coming back she came very close to us with a tray i got the shock of my life you know what friends she was herself looking like a cat i wish i could show a picture of hers on this presentation or i could have taken a selfie with her which i'm going to do some day for sure she had two whiskers on her face don't ask me how it grew i'm not sure she was walking like a cat 
and she was talking like a cat too can you imagine <laughs> right she was saying yes it, that that was like a meow and i was like i was actually shocked listening to that it gave a shock and we just wanted to escape that place so what i'm trying to say is i also understood from her as we were speaking we understood this that she has been living with this cats for almost 25 years can you imagine not the same cats of course probably different segments of cats and uh, she has today become like a cat so why i am saying this is friends your atmosphere can influence your personality and your character to a great extent it can influence both your character and your personality so your surroundings you have to be very careful right it should be you should fill your life with a lot of positivity a lot of good movies read only nice books connect with only positively charged people right honestly i'll tell you there are a lot of people today who will pull you down <laughs> not deliberately that's how they are composed now for example okay i called up one of my friend probably uh, not when this covid period but long back last year i was tell i was going through a, a little bit of a stressful I called him and i was sharing it you know what he said he said sir exactly absolutely life is like this life is bad life is terrible i am also going through the same thing <laughs> right so imagine you call up someone and the person says yeah that's right life is terrible you will they'll even pull you down <laughs> right so don't connect with people who are going to further pull you down friends connect with people whom you call and say you know what life is terrible and they say hey you know what no life is not terrible don't give up and they push you we need such people we need to connect with such people we need to connect with such positive people if you think there are negative elements in your life friends detach yourself from those negative elements it could be books it could be movies it could be people right maybe i mean if they are part of your family maybe you are you 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 can't detach yourself i wouldn't advise that but you know probably you shouldn't allow their thought process to affect your thought process detach yourself from their principles right because some people you can't detach yourself from them because they are important people in our life but detach yourself from their belief patterns and from their principles or else what will happen your life will be governed by those negative thought process so i like to connect with a lot of positive people and even people who connect with me on facebook or twitter i'm very selective in choosing that pe- those people i go and see what's there on their wall if i see anything that they've written against the government or anything negative i make sure that i don't accept such a request i only accept requests after a small scrutiny all right so friends we have to know what is governing people are they positively charged right i was talking to one of my friend who said you know whenever he stressed he calls his friend and the other friend you know what he does he says hey la come let's go to the bar <laughs> right come let's go for a drink look at this when you are stressed there are people waiting to take you know advantage of your stress and pull you to a bar and make you you know drain your pocket drain your drain your entire whatever whatever you, all that energy you have stored up there are people willing to drain that off be very choosy be very choosy about whom you connect friends because we should choose people who are willing to participate in building us and not breaking us right i hope you are able to understand some of you are able to relate to me i can see your comments thank you so much for those comments you are able to relate to it so once you realize i think we should move away friends you know this change has to happen in us okay so i'm going forward i took a lot of time on this slide because it's a very important slide and before i leave this slide the credits for this slide is goes to dr steven r kave who is the author of the book the seven habits of highly effective people if possible read all his books friends all his books all his books are amazing books they will transform your life all right very few authors write books like that stephen covey daniel goleman he has written books on emotional intelligence we have books by norman vincent pelle who writes on the power of positive thinking 
Robert Schuller has written books on tough times never last but tough people do. Shiv Kera, you can win. All these books will charge you up. All right. I will show you a list of my favorite books which has transformed me. All right. So in a, in some time, some some slide later on. So we we'll keep moving forward. This is a very important slide, but I wish I don't take so much of time because if I am allowed to talk about this slide, it will take a long time. Friends, this is especially for all of you teaching professionals on the call. Professors, lecturers, maybe teachers, trainers from corporate. If you are listening to this, friends, remember. Before you verbalize, before you share anything with your students, you should have internalized it. Okay. I hope you are able to understand this. A lot many people today just verbalize whatever comes in their mouth, but they themselves have not internalized what they what they are trying to say. So I hope you are able to understand. Before you verbalize, before you say anything. you have to internalize it so if you read anything just don't read it on a surface level and verbalize it you have to internalize it in the sense it should have impacted your mind it should have influenced you and only then you should verbalize it friends right till then don't verbalize it because the moment so i'll tell you the benefit the moment you internalize it and you believe in what you're saying you know what happens you will start to speak with a sense of conviction you will start to speak with power and authority there will be dynamics in the way you speak and you know what will happen every student you listen to will be transformed i will give you that guarantee friends every student every person you encounter if you're able to if you really want to influence this is what you're supposed to do you have to internalize every content for example let me tell you you know probably you're going to read this book the seven habits of highly effective people So Dr Stephen Covey talks about two things he says you need to you need to focus on the circle of influence so there are two things he talks about circle of influence and circle of concern once you have read that you should have also executed that in your life that's internalization once you have followed that and internalized it if you tell it to others it will not go just like that you will not be able to simply say it because you have experienced it it will go with power it will go so powerfully that anybody who's listening to you will just buy it will just listen to it and it will transform them so friends so this is something that's extremely important especially for teaching professionals all right or for people for leaders who want to influence others make sure that whatever you read in gets internalized whatever you know conferences you attend like this you internalize whatever the person says and you 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 have to be receptive for that you have to be very receptive it's called learning receptivity the moment you are receptive your brain will catalog everything do you know friends your brain is so powerful that it it catalogs it stores everything and once you have put into practice whatever you're listening you will be able to speak with a sense of conviction all right so that's why people leaders who truly follow things who have really executed they've demonstrated it that in their personal lives when they speak we know that it's coming with power all right friends so we'll keep going ahead you can whatever question that keeps popping up let's park it towards the end friends we will have sufficient time probably around 30 minutes i think we should have time for questions or else i will share my mail id you can write a mail to me i will be willing to answer so don't worry your questions will get addressed some way or the other all right only thing is my humble request is please be on mute friends all right so that we don't disturb this call thank you very much so So I was talking about internalizing, right? Do not verbalize until you internalize. Another thing I want to say is do not be judgmental friends. Perception is extremely important in our life, right? We cannot you know have a judgment about anybody, especially students. I'm sure all of you are coming across students in your life. Friends, my humble request is that you don't you know draw perceptions about them 
the moment you draw perceptions about them, it will affect your interaction with them. Right? It will definitely affect your interaction with them. And, you know, it's, it can affect even them. It can affect them. So, you know what we do from our corporate? We usually travel in the weekends for NGO activities. We call it CSR or Corporate Social Responsibility. We go to colleges or we go to schools and help teaching professionals, you know, understand new ways of coaching. So in one of those colleges, the principal asked me to observe a teaching session. So I was observing a session and I realized that the particular lecturer or the staff there was only focused on the front row. All right. That, that lecturer was only looking at the students sitting in the first row. So I was a bit curious because this eye contact is extremely important. Right. So you will have to have a distributed eye contact in the room. So after the session was over, I told her and got her permission right to to actually talk to those students i got a permission to talk to those students so so after, actually she left the room so i was talking to them so i i went near them and asked them so why do you think that she has eye contact only towards the front row i asked one of the students i didn't ask the entire class so the the uh, i asked one front row student and the student told me that well, all of us in the front rows are first rankers, all right? We fall under the first six ranks, <laughs> all right? And that's the reason the lecturer is looking at us. See how sad. So friends, do we have some kind of a bias in us when dealing with people, right? So, I mean, everybody is important there, irrespective of whether they are knowledgeable or not knowledgeable, right? So, and you can never, you never know what the future is going to do, friends. The tables will turn. A, a student who is a failure today can be the most successful student in that institution in future. Right? If you see a lot of successful, very successful people, right, were college dropouts. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to be a dropout. It's not that. But, you know, you can't have we can't run these things with a with a sense of bias in our mind so my kind you know friends suggestion is that or request is that when you deal with these you know students or whoever comes and learns from you or whoever it is right we have to demonstrate a level of being non-judgmental being judgmental to them is being critical to them that you do it in private only to them you can tell them this these are areas that you know that you need to improve but you can't look at them with the eye of bias if you're doing that you're not a good teacher there's no doubt about it friends right look at the struggle that we underwent when we were students friends did we just fall from heaven no we all have struggled at some point of time in our lives i think empathy is a skill which is definitely needed for all of us empathy we need to empathize so when you're looking at these students or anybody for that matter don't bring in a level of judgmental no don't be judgmental we have to be correct with our perception right because sometimes the dirt is not out there it is on our eyes so i want to i want to tell you something very interesting all right a small story I heard this sometime long back from one of my friend. It's a very funny story. So there's a husband and a wife having a conversation one morning. So the wife takes her husband close to a window and she keeps comparing the neighbor's clothes. So from the dining room window, she can see the neighbor's clothes and she keeps telling her husband, hey, you know, honey, look at the neighbor's clothes, how dirty they are and look at my clothes, how nice I wash them. All right. So, this happens every single day. Every single day, this keeps happening. So, one particular day, she goes near the window and she says, Honey, today I'm so surprised. All our neighbor's clothes are so clean. And she says very sadly, It's more cleaner than my clothes. <laughs> right? And the husband says, Hey, hey, relax, relax. 
today morning i got up a little early and i cleaned our windows <laughs> right so the clothes were always clean so sometimes probably people out there are good situations are good but probably there are these filters of perception right through which if we look so are we having those filters of bias stereotype thinking and all that so i know we are all going through that phase right even i've gone through that so we all go through that we make these mistakes in our life i want to share a small story a real life story okay real incident that that i went through in my life several years back i was traveling from ananagar to ambattur right and i was on a bus that day i was seated in the last seat in the bus so from the front door there was one boy who got into the bus he was the only guy uh, yeah he was the only guy standing in the bus so he was standing facing the the passengers he was holding that rod near the driver seat and he is moving and coming all right he is standing on the bus the bus is moving and we are going towards ambattur the problem was this guy was staring at me continuously continuously he was looking at me and you know what i did i was being so cruel i thought because i hate people staring at me okay honestly so i thought the bus driver should put a sudden brake all right and you can fill up the blanks so he was continuously looking at me now when we reached this place tirumangalam on the way to ambattur the guy seated next to me gets down now this guy from the front runs and comes and sits next to me and i was like what is he up to i was feeling a little uncomfortable he was sitting very close and again looking at me right i can see him looking at me so i was feeling so irritated i wanted to give him a stare and probably ask him what's happening man but what happened is i saw him crying i i could hear his you know that gaping for breath so when i looked at him he was indeed crying and i asked him what's wrong and he told me a story friends that that's completely changed me changed the way how i started seeing people it seems he used to have a friend who used to look very very much like me who passed away several years back and that's the reason he was looking at me so friends many times we have misunderstood people our perceptions may not be right all the time so it's important for us to not just look at it from a surface level and you know allow our mind to just build stories we would have heard something or seen something it may not be true right so be very careful about what your mind is perceiving friends even now even with all the changes happening how is your perception i see it very positively i know the world is headed for something nice we are headed for something so beautiful friends we are something we are headed for something very different very developed we are going to get very developed we are going to get into times which are going to be very blessed for all of us we are going to be very learned in future we are going to be have let me tell you something something i read very recently in whatsapp some of the best days in your life are yet to happen wow <laughs> what a promising thought isn't it some of the best days in your life are yet to happen that hope is enough that hope is enough isn't it friends so i need i need we need to focus and have that hope towards that and look forward to those blessed days right so i hope this slide added a bit of insights to all of you i will take you forward friends this is a very important slide extremely important right why is it important because it talks about purpose so the why so it's very important for us to know the why all right why so friends the why is nothing but the purpose or the belief that drives every one of us why are you teaching think have you ever thought about it friends why do you really want to teach why do you want to go and i'm sure i i'm i'm i i believe that i'm addressing a lot of lecturers and professors and teachers on the call and so you'll have to you know and it's not just that even if you're not you know in that 
profession, we are teaching everybody something or the other. You're teaching your children. Even if you're not a teacher, you have to play that role at some point of time in our lives, right? We're probably teaching our family members. We're teaching our neighborhood, something or the other. So we definitely need to operate with purpose. In fact, every person operates on three levels on their career. What we do, how we do, and why we do. All right? What we do, how we do it, and why we do it. How and what we know. We all of us know what to do, how to do. We all know. But why are we doing? Why am I having this session today? Why should I really give my best today? I thought about it today morning. What is the purpose of this session in my life? Why this session is so important? I have come to this session thinking of the why. Because I'm addressing a lot of people who are responsible in building powerful citizens of this nation. This is not an ordinary call. I'm sure about that. And that's the reason, you know, friends, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful with whatever I'm saying. Because all of you are, you know, going to be transforming lives. And hence, this call is important. Since this why is important, you have to know this why. Why am I in this career? Why do I need to give my best in my teaching programs at college, right? Or wherever it is. So friends, think about the why, right? Think about the why. So there are several books. I will share a book. We are headed to that page where we'll talk about a book that talks about the purpose. In fact, there are multiple books, but I will give you one of the best books written on purpose, Right? Start with the why. That the title of the book is Start with the Why. Right? So, so I hope all of you will go and have this question. Why? Why should I really do good in my life? Why should I give it my best in my work? I will tell you a very interesting thing, friends, here. If you really want to give it your best in your, in your career, whatever you are, you could be a doctor, you could be a professor, a lecturer, a teacher, all right? anybody, if you want to give it your best, there is one way. There's a secret, friends, all right? I'm going to tell you. How can you, you know, transform yourself and, you know, every day that you go for your work, you make it a day of power and magic for everybody who listens to you. How do you do that? Let me tell you, friends, you know how you can do that? You should think of the reason how you are able to sit in that job today. If I ask you this question, friends, how are you able to sit in that career today? Many of you will tell me it is because of my knowledge, it is because of my experience. I will say no. Anybody can gain experience, anybody can gain knowledge. But we needed people who were there to invest in our education. Don't forget them, friends. Who are they? The people who invested in our education. Hard-earned blood and sweat were invested by our parents in our career. If you are not giving it your best in your career, you are not doing justice to that hard-earned blood and sweat, my dear friends. So you should keep thinking that every time. And that will keep you passionate in your job. This is a secret, okay? Keep thinking about that every single day. Right? Or if you do not know how much they have really struggled, what you should do is you should go and ask them stories about you know, how much they struggled to educate you. There were days probably they didn't eat. There were sleepless nights when you and I cried as a baby. It's not just the investment in college where they invested in school or college. But, you know, the care they had. So if they had not invested, if that hard-earned blood and sweat was not invested in our career, we wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here talking to you. You wouldn't be sitting there listening to me. There are a lot of people out there, friends, who are more intelligent than us. Very sadly, they are not able to come and get educated because they don't have people to invest for them. Are we not lucky that we had people in our life who invested for us? So don't you think we should really make a difference, friends? Every day is important, my dear friends. Give it your best every single day. At least let this thought 
make you perform much better make you a better professional i'm sure you are great i'm sure you're doing a great job but try to give it more try to give it in a manner that everybody who connects with you will be transformed if everybody of if all of us on the call think of that just imagine the change that we can bring about i want to tell you a story friends i want to tell a story right so there was a small boy who was standing near a seashore so what he did is he realized that there were a lot of starfish that the sea waters were bringing to the shore so what he did he started taking one by one and he started throwing it back into the sea all right he took one starfish so there were crores of starfishes i'm not sure if you know this starfish once it comes outside the sea what happens it dies usually it doesn't know to swim back so usually it dies on the shore so in order to save it what he did he started throwing it back into the ocean there was a old man who was watching all this he comes and asks this little boy hey little boy i have been seeing you for all this while you have been throwing starfishes back into the ocean but how much will you throw how much will you throw you can throw probably 10 or 20 or probably even 100 but there are crores of starfishes the boy simply smiles and he the old man also asks him what difference will you make you know what this boy does he picks up one more starfish throws it back into the ocean and he tells this old man sir i just made a difference to that starfish so friends whatever is within our capacity and capability what is whatever is within our influence we should be doing that friends if you have the power to improve people do it if you have the power to transform people do it right i read this somewhere it really brought in a lot of insight into my life you know it goes like this if you teach a man i mean if you if you give a man a fish to eat right he will eat for that day if you teach him how to fish he will eat for a lifetime it's a beautiful i i've read it somewhere so it's important that we what we you know impart the knowledge that we impart transforms others it makes their lives different so that they will further go and influence others just imagine if everybody in this world is transforming others the world will become a transformed place it will be a much better place it is it will get even better all right okay so going forward we also have to aim for something called as excellence a very important word i just love this word word excellence friends so what is this word excellence in fact the oxford english dictionary defines excellence as the state or fact of excelling in an eminent or unusual degree one person if i have to say as an example is sachin tendulkar right we all know him he is a very eminent personality why because he has excelled in a very unusual degree not many people were able to match up his scores or run rate or many things many records that he had not many people were able to match up to that so he excelled but how did he excel you know we see his matches we see his uh, you know sixer and all that and we can say hey great guy but you know behind the scenes there was hard work very interestingly friends the word excel is a verb look at that the word excel is a verb all right and interestingly what is a verb grammatically a verb is anything that denotes an action right so if you have to excel what should you do you have to keep actioning you have to keep working on it otherwise we can't excel aristotle said this several years back we are what we repeatedly do hence excellence is therefore not an act but a habit so when we do it repeatedly something we become excellent at it right so the word excellence is today part of the business world we call customer excellence performance excellence so it's a very important word so aim for this friends i need to excel in what i'm doing whatever i'm doing let me do it to the best we need to excel in our teaching skills in our training skills in enabling influencing others it's it's a leadership skill we need to be better leaders tomorrow right 
So think about it, friends. This is about excellence. And let me tell you, how do you excel? It's because of repetition. When you do something repeatedly again and again, we can excel. And this is a beautiful, you know, word I picked it up, picked up from somewhere from Google. It says the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. I recently posted it in Facebook also. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Wow. That means every single day we have an opportunity, right, to get closer to our dreams, to get better at things. Let's not lose any single day, friends. Let's not lose any single day. Every day is extremely important for us. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine or daily agenda. I know COVID has, you know, probably brought in a disturbance in our agenda. Right? It's probably uh, brought in a disruption in our routine. But I think, friends, we should not, you know, go by that. Right? You should probably swim across this disruption and be like live fish. Okay? Disruption is there, but you should also, you know, not get submerged like a ship that is able to come over the storm and still, you know, sail across. I think we have to navigate through the storm and come out strong. And I'm, I'll tell you something, friends. Once this phase is over, if you're sticking on to this phase with confidence, when we're coming out of this phase, we will come out of this phase very strong as better people as more affectionate people, as more, as people with better empathy. Right? Right, friends? Okay. So, we'll go forward. So, how do you equip yourself? So, I'm not going to give you just certain theory and walk off, friends. I will also tell you what to do, okay? So, for all those people who are listening to me, all those wonderful people out there, right, who are, I'll call you people magicians, who are transformers, right? If, when you, if you're listening to me, how do you equip yourself for success? Some of you are probably, as I know a lot of you are doctors, PhD holders, right? But some of the learning that we underwent in the past is all changing. We can't stick on to that learning. So how do you keep yourself equipped? I will give you these three, you know, beautiful websites, friends which offer online courses. One is Coursera. I think it's that's the best. Coursera, Udemy, and Upgrad, right? These three are amazing. You can learn, do online courses, right? So I would request all of you to, you know, do some course or the other. You can get into these. Coursera is the best because it's affiliated with a lot of top universities across the world. So... You can actually browse through this and you can do some courses so that you will be aligned to some future trends. These courses have all these wonderful sites have got courses that are future-oriented courses, right? Courses that will help us in the coming years. Like, for example, robotics. Right? Artificial intelligence, robotics, Bitcoin, blockchain, cloud. So, I'm not saying all of you are technology-oriented people. So, if there are also courses in management. There are also courses in gardening. Right? You can pick up any course. But, you know, pick up courses based on two things, friends. One is pick up courses based on your passion areas. If you're really passionate about an area... I think you should you're headed in the right direction. Because if you do anything with passion, passion, you'll be successful. No doubt. Another thing is pick up courses that will be part of the current trend. Okay. So if you are also, you know, I, I know that there are management professionals who are exploring technology also. It's a very intelligent thing to do. Okay. If you're part of the management field, it's good to have some idea of the technological sector. Don't completely... Keep it away. You should know a little bit about it so that even if you're attending an international seminar or a conference, you can talk at least surface level on that. You won't be completely ignorant about that. Right? So, for example, if you know a little bit of robotics and artificial intelligence, it actually helps you. 
right? Because everything is anyway getting interviewed, friends. You can't segregate, bifurcate it. The management field will have to somehow int weave in, weave itself to the technological world, not to maybe a great extent, but you know we are all dependent on the technology. And hence, I'm telling you, friends. So keep yourselves equipped. You know you can do courses in all these sites, which are very helpful. And I want to show you some books. All right. So I hope you have taken a note of this. Coursera, Udemy, and Upgrad. Books that will transform you. I highly recommend these books, friends. Books that can really transform your life. All right. What are these books? Great authors. All right. So awaken the giant within. Oh, I've read all these books, friends. On that's listed on the screen, and I mean it's amazing. I've not that read them just once. You can't read them just once, okay? Because every time you read them. you will learn more because you'll be looking at uh, look looking at it from a different perspective every time and they will teach you new things every time so probably you can take a list of these books right some of you are probably commenting saying there is a disruption in between i hope you know that it is also being streamed in youtube so you can also watch it later in case you are having difficulty in watching it now because of your bandwidth right so Awaken the Giant Within is a nice book. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. It's an amazing book. It's written by this guy, guy called uh, Joseph Murphy. He's he. If you read that book, you will realize how powerful we are. Again, I told you about this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, right? And start with a why. I told you there is a book on purpose. This is the book, friends. Start with the why. It is written on this principle called the Golden Circle. the author's name is simon sinek you can also watch his videos on youtube he speaks about a concept called as the golden circle all right how what and why he beautifully explains that you can also read the book and watch some of his videos of course the power of positive thinking is a nice book shiv kera's you can win is an amazing book emotional intelligence i'll tell you friends it's one of those skills that we really really need to have right emotional intelligence is one of those very important things and the best book written on emotional intelligence on planet earth i can say that so confidently was written by daniel goleman i've read this book i think 10 15 times minimum of 10 times i guess 15 is an exaggeration i'm sorry uh, at least 10 times i've read that book it's an amazing book and again the third alternative by dr steven covey is again a nice book right So to try to procure all this book, friends, it will be a really good investment. All right. So we'll go ahead. All of you to be on mute. Madam, madam, please be on mute. Madam, madam. your friends kind request okay thank you so much so so if you see here friends this slide so i've i've we've been talking about learning upskilling yourself if we don't do that if we risk ourselves you know by not learning and upskilling ourselves we will be part of this list sometime soon all right sudhakar sir you're welcome so so if we are not partaking you know in the change and if we are not going to learn we will be part of this list very soon right we will become obsolete right so we shouldn't become like a typewriter or a film roll and so on but of course uh, we can be we can read books that's okay there are books behind in the background but most of the things on the screen are all obsolete right friends so let's be careful all our knowledge that we have stored up all these years all right let's not depend only on that let's look forward to learning more use those sites okay friends all those you know sites that i told you right coursera udemy and upgrad please browse through that today itself today itself not tomorrow please do it today you will find them very beneficial you can pick up courses from that not very expensive and there's a discount going on sometimes so if you're lucky you will get a discount and good thing is you get a beautiful certificates 
all right so that's nice and some some courses of course don't have certificates it depends but at least you will have the learning okay so yeah someone is asking me for my mail id i will give it ma'am towards the end i will share my mail id so we will go ahead some more things to share okay so friends we are not done yet i see a lot of vote of thanks related messages please be there we are not done yet all right we are not done yet so, so this, this is, is a very, very important, important slide. slide the coming, the coming slides, slides are important, important because, because it will help you when, you when you facilitate your sessions to your participants see there is something called as learning through cross pollination okay learning through cross pollination so what is cross pollination bees actually do that they sit on one flower right they go to multiple flowers for honey and in the process of doing that they are actually you know carrying those pollen along with them right it helps in the propagation of a species we are supposed to you know friends emulate that quality of bees in the sense we can't stick to only one platform for learning so i've shown you three platforms where you can equip yourself but, but don't stick only to that i will tell you another another area where you can go and learn like anything all right you can subscribe to harvard business review in my lifetime i have seen the best learning is from harvard friends harvard business review just subscribe to it subscription cost per month is around 800 but it's worth it it's worth it right so kindly subscribe to harvard business review hbr right you can go and google up it's 800 per month but worth it friends another thing is you can also have the app called ted ted talks not sure if you heard about ted t e d and keep listening to these ted talks on a daily basis i keep listening to at least few ted talks every day and it adds up to our knowledge all right so keep doing that friends learning has to involve four stages what all has to involve so learning is not only for our students it's also for all of us who are probably teaching them something right if you're teaching people anything you will also have to learn so learning is not just for our participants but even for us so learning involves you know four phases actually there are four dimensions of learning one is learning another is unlearning then you have relearning and then applying also learning we all know we all know what's learning you learn from books you learn from what you watch you learn even from whatsapp right you know what is relearning also relearning is you learn the latest updates about that about that content applying is nothing but you demonstrate that learning but what is unlearning many people get puzzled when i ask this question what is unlearning you may, many of you may know the answer but i will i would like to reiterate on unlearning because we learn we relearn we apply that's fine unlearning is nothing but removing the wrongly learnt things from us now how do we do that you know we have a recycle button in the computer but we don't have a recycle button in our brain wish we had a switch so how do we unlearn unlearning is removing the wrongly learnt things from our brain so i want to share a small story friends it's a funny story i read it somewhere a long time back you'll understand what is unlearning the moment i tell you the story so there was a small boy who was studying for his geography examination geography was my favorite subject okay one of the reasons is it didn't have maths in it <laughs> okay so this is a small boy studying for his geography examination so he takes his book and he reads the shape of the earth is round the shape of the earth is round so he's studying for his exam at his house now his father is not a very educated man all right his father is a illiterate guy so his father comes and asks him son what are you learning so he says that daddy i'm learning that the shape of the earth is spherical oh yeah i'm sorry spherical right he learns that the shape of the earth is a sphere it's a spherical in shape so his father says who the hell told you it is spherical father says it's not spherical it is flat so son is confused he says daddy teacher says it's spherical textbook says it's spherical father says hello i'm your dad man you listen to me <laughs> right now this small boy is very confused he goes to school the next day the first question on the question paper is what is the shape of the earth teacher says spherical father says flat he's so perplexed 
you know what he writes on the answer sheet he writes the shape of the earth is spherical at school and flat at home <laughs> right he writes the shape of the earth is spherical at school and flat at home so if we don't unlearn we will end up applying all the learning right so i want to take you through these four levels of learning friends it's an amazing thing it's especially for teaching professionals it will be very good right and i'm thankful to all those all those people all those friends all those respected educationists who are actually commenting all right thank you so much I respect your comments i'm not able to individually thank you but thank you so much i'm parallelly you know seeing those comments also popping up so there are four levels of learning what are those four levels of learning look at that red color bar on the on the pyramid first all right friends please listen to this slide teaching professionals this is a very important slide i'm not sure if you heard of this there are four levels of learning the 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 bottom level is the red color quadrant all right or the red, i'm sorry the red color segment it's called as unconscious incompetence what is unconscious incompetence so the people who come to your sessions or the students who come to learn from you they are initially you know they are in this level called unconscious incompetence they do not know what they do not know okay what is unconscious incompetence they do not know what they do not know you have to move them you have to help them transition from that phase from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence what is conscious incompetence i know what i don't know it is the responsibility of any teaching professional to take their learners or transition their learners from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence unconscious incompetence is i do not know what i do not know you take them to a level of conscious incompetence how do you take them there you know there are various tools for you to help in diagnosing right these are diagnosis tools for example swot analysis is there johari window is there so i'm 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 not able to explain all this but you can browse through friends i'm sure many of you have come across swot analysis strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats so swot if you run a swot for your participants they will realize that there are areas in them that needs to be you know skilled up skilled so they will know these are the areas so they will move to a level of conscious incompetence i know what i don't know from there you will have to move them to conscious competence that will happen when you teach them what is conscious competence i know what i know but the problem is many people stop there conscious competence i, I know what i know i know what i know is conscious competence you are not supposed to stop there there is another phase called unconscious competence what is that phase it's the most powerful phase of learning what happens in this phase when you repeatedly keep learning the learning that you have you know you know put into your brain all those learning interventions that you have attended all those will be part of your unconscious com you know competence even if someone wakes you up and you know you know probably in a partially conscious state they ask you something if you have repeatedly applied something you will immediately say the answer unconscious competence one very small example for unconscious competence is friends see today we are able to look at someone and type something on our phones right we don't have to focus on the keypad we can look at somewhere else and type what is that unconscious competence Sachin Tendulkar, I can take his example. You know, you know something, friends. The knowledge of cricket or the theory of cricket that was there in his brain got trans, got you know, transferred to his hand. I'm not sure if you've heard about muscle memory. If you keep learning something again and again, and when you keep applying it again and again, there is something called as muscle memory. The theory about that thing that you're learning will get actually impregnated on the cells of your hand. on the muscle of your hand right that's what happens when you type a message you don't have to look into the keypad you look at somewhere else and type because it's it's wired into your brain we all have to reach that level friends our skills have to become unconsciously you know we have to be unconsciously competent 
we don't have to realize that we are competent it is driven into us and it is wired into us right and it just spills out whenever people need it so that you can be a great source of support for anybody who seeks your support all right friends i hope you got this message you can also browse through this and get into deeper aspects of this i'm keeping it on a very surface level because of want of time right quickly we'll go ahead retention studies have shown that combination is very effective all right this is for teaching professionals again i hope this is helpful for all of you when you combine teaching methodologies all right it becomes very effective how see this graph here shows you know if you look at both the x axis x axis and the y axis all right it shows the memory and the approaches if you read alone if someone keeps reading alone their memory retention is probably 20 percentage right within a certain amount of time only 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 10 percentage if they hear it is 20 percentage if they see all right it's 40 percentage all right if they both combine seeing and hearing it will be you know and practicing all right it will be 70 percentage can you imagine and if you repeat that within 70 to hours it shoots up and accelerates to 90 percentage can you imagine so what should we do friends our teaching methodologies have to go through something very effective a transformation probably are we just telling them something you can also showcase some videos visuals are very good i mean visuals are always good something for them to see something for them to hear you're already talking to them and you need to give them assignments for them to practice and there has to be some kind of a repetition within 72 hours you'll see that the memory gets retained much better and they they are able to remember it not only from an exam perspective but also from a life perspective okay friends so this is an important slide i'll quickly go ahead learning styles quickly we'll see this friends why do we need to have different styles of learning is because there are three different types of learners who are they there are visual learners there are auditory learners and there are kinesthetic learners visual learners learn by seeing auditory learners learn by listening all right and kinesthetic learners learn by activity let me tell you friends if your session has a combination of all this if your session has some visual element if your session has an auditory element and if you give some amount of an activity or a simulation for your participants it would be those they can never forget that session that session for a lifetime so that's why because there are different types of learners you need to cater to the learning styles of all of those different types of learners all right so that's what it says different strokes for different folks you need to have something for everyone all right and this is again an important slide it talks about learning occurring in three stages i hope you're taking notes friends it's important all right learning occurs in three stages the first stage is a dependent stage the second stage is a collaborative stage the third is an independent stage in a dependent stage the facilitator or a teacher's role is 80 percentage the students or the participants you know percentage of involvement is probably only 20 percentage in a collaborative stage it is 50 percentage 50 percentage there has to be a stage where it has to become 80 20 where only the facilitator has to give guidance here and there but the student or the participant has to really have that knowledge and they have to be independent in taking that learning further if you are always being there you know supporting the students they will not take they will not take proactive action in learning so let me give you a powerful a powerful word that i read, read somewhere recently it says provide support without removing responsibility i'm saying that again provide support without removing responsibility okay you can provide support but don't remove somebody's responsibility because responsibility is nothing but their ability to respond says dr stephen cave if you are always there to respond for them 
how will they develop that responsibility or the ability to respond so let's not retard the growth of the ability to respond that level of uh, you know friends skill has to be uh, you know given importance right so let's not hamper with that we have to be supportive but at the same time sometime you need to take your hands off the steering wheel and give them complete control right so that they will probably do some mistakes and they come back and ask you and then you correct them everybody learns with a little bit of mistakes right friends so the teaching methodologies i've shared will be i hope useful in future because that's where we are headed the future is going to be a blended learning approach we have already started schools have already started colleges are almost starting that we will have both face to face and virtual programs blended and it has to be all lot of activity and simulation based programs such sessions will be really powerful all right and i want to give you some hope through these coming slides friends do not confuse your path with your destination you know just because it is stormy now doesn't mean that we aren't headed for sunshine and one good thing is a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor isn't it only when a sea is stormy the sailor becomes skilled he knows how to handle if there are bigger storms that come across the way so if these storms are coming we actually need to develop resilience learning agility and various other skills in order to handle this but not give up or get depressed right so we will we will have to rise above the storm by developing escape velocity i hope you remember that book okay friends so don't again remember this friends don't let the best you have done so far become the standard for the rest of your life this is one of those barriers okay this is one of those barriers it says don't let the best you have done so far become the standard for the rest of your life okay friends just like you know just like how the rabbit was being very complacent all right he was sitting there very complacently and finally he lost so the opposite of being complacent is being responsible and i think this time is a time where it calls for responsibility high level of high levels of us to you know respond with proactivity right we have to proactively respond so and this is a beautiful slide i have you know had one full session on this slide in a, in some of our corporate programs all limitations are self imposed all limitations are in our head only friends it's not outside okay so george s payton he puts it beautifully like this he says if you have to win any battle you have to do one thing you have to make the mind run the body okay never let the body tell the mind what to do the body will always give up it is always tired in the morning it is always sometimes tired in the afternoon also but the body is you know but the body is never tired if the mind is not tired so if you run the body with your mind or the governance your mind has to govern that's what he says so if you see that picture there it's beautiful right it has a big message sometimes the thing that is holding you back is all in your head you know some of the horses I'm not sure if you've seen this they just tie them to a chair the horse could have just you know ripped apart that and gone away but it's mentally tied it's not physical physically tied it's mentally tied so sometimes what happens we are also mentally tied we should know where all we are mentally tied and probably detach ourselves so that we can perform better and we are headed progressively in the right direction okay friends so i'm about to finish friends all right and i will also share my email towards the end we need to be interdependent all right we need to be interdependent if you want to in the sense you need to you need people you can't go alone in this journey so don't be alone some of us maybe are introverts but remember we have we need people we cannot be independent here we need to be interdependent there's a beautiful african proverb that says if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far go together 
or go along with others right so let's be interdependent friends when you need help i mean there are people around to help us you just need to shout for help but when others are shouting for help let's give them a hand right so that is interdependence all right friends so we have come to the close of this pro program i think there are another 30 minutes so if you see here friends uh, this is an important slide uh, for you to understand uh, i mean uh, not to understand properly but to see what all i've been through and what all i've got certified on it also has my mail id both my official and my personal mail id i've given in this so you can stay in touch you can write to me at any point of time friends i will respond to anything that you write if you have any queries on whatever was covered i will be glad to you know help you and in case uh, i am not able to help you i will connect with other uh, others who are more knowledgeable and i can get back to you with their inputs i am very very thankful to the principal and the college authorities who gave me this wonderful opportunity i am thankful to dhanalakshmi ma'am she was very supportive she was literally calling me every single day i am thankful to vigneshwar and sir and uh, but before we close you can also ask questions i am willing to answer that so you can take down this mail id friends all right and uh, you can write to me and i will be uh, you know i will have the pleasure to write to you back maybe i don't promise on the timeline i don't say that i will immediately respond but i will you know respond at some point of time very soon okay so any questions we're not done i hope i have another 30 minutes is what i understand from sir so if you have any questions you can ask me friends participants if you have if you have any questions unmute yourself and ask so i've stopped sharing my presentation friends you can unmute yourself and ask questions if you have any i'll be willing to answer Any questions from participants? Okay, Seema is typing something. Seema, you want to make that audible? It just just went off. You want you you can even address it on the. You ask for something, but it just passed by. Multiple people pinging pinging at the same time, and hence it just went. Seema, Seema, ma'am, you want to ask something? Um, you can Hello. unmute yourself, ma'am. Yes, yes. Hello, you are getting my voice, sir. I'm I'm able to hear you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good Myself, afternoon, Seema, and it yes, uh, it was wonderful session, sir. I must say, and it just as uh, you can see a transforming session for me. Okay, so my great, question great. is that uh, mm -hmm. why negative thinking uh, respond quickly rather than if we think positively, it take a very long time. Why? Very good. Yes. See, ma'am, our brain is composed like that. That's the most easiest answer I can say. I I, I have to explain this a lot, uh, but I will tell you how. Okay, how it works. See, our brain captures negativity quickly. That's how our brain is composed. All right. Okay. So, for example, if you go for a movie, you put a lot of money, spent a lot, you know, to make that movie a success, but still people will say, "And the script la kunjo problem." <laughs> people people will say something you know i attended one of my cousin's marriage long back and it was amazing well arranged well organized i thought people will not have anything badly to say right so after two months when i spoke to him i told him i've never attended a function like this man it was amazing everything was organized veg counter separately non veg separately everything was well streamlined car parking everything was arranged but you know what he said Fleming, that's yeah. not the. That's what you think. People were still complaining about the soup. <laughs> so, so why I'm saying this is, you know, the our brains are, you know, like that. We focus. We tend to focus on what can be improved. It's a good thing. It's it's in fact good because you're looking at it from a improving perspective. 
but you can't look at it from a complaining perspective. Your eyes have to see the negative. But you'll have to look at it from a constructive perspective. How do I transform that? How do I improve that? Not a complaining perspective. Look how it is. <laughs> right? So you're not looking at that from a complaining perspective. You're looking at it from a, oh, this is an area of improvement. I need to improve that. If you're looking at it from that perspective, I think that's the best thing, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, sir. Anything else, friends? You can... Uh, you can ask questions, unmute yourself and ask me. I'll be glad to answer. I think we have another half an hour for this call to close. Am I right, sir? Vigneshwaran, sir, am I right? Half an hour? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, good. So, we have 30 minutes, friends. Sir is saying he can also extend it. <laughs> so, I don't mind if it goes on till evening also, I'll be there. I'd love to help people. Yes. <laughs> yes, friends, you can ask me. I'm not... I'm not a very uh, learned person or something, but whatever is within my knowledge, I will answer. If I'm not able to answer, I will probably get it from somebody else and tell you later. Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Can yes. you hear me, sir? I can hear you, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, this is Fatima. That is, I want to make some clarification. Yes, ma'am. That is, as a professor, oh. uh, yes, sir, to us, we have to thoughts towards the students because the perspective that your views may differ according to your opinion that you thought that in so that is to my point of view i can see that is a six but the others point of view it can they may view as a nine okay. hello sir yeah i can uh, hear sir. you ma'am yes uh, the students they may differ in their opinion when they listen to the class. As you said, that are some teachers, they may concentrate on the first benches. Correct. Even the last, yes. they can succeed in their life and compared to the That's first right. bench. That's right. Uh -huh. But when we adopt this view in our classroom, the superior mm -hmm. person, the head of the department or maybe some other superior person, mm -hmm. they won't accept our views. So how we can overcome and how we can handle such a supervisor's opinion, okay. sir. Ma'am, let me tell you something honestly. Uh, such supervisors are probably very experienced and they're learned, they're nice. But they are thinking from uh, their school days and their college days. Palai kal to thinking. <laughs> okay, ma'am. So I think uh, they, should, they should be actually uh, attending programs like this, honestly. Because uh, it is, it is ma'am, uh, what I've heard and from a lot of research, it's a wrong way of approach that if you're only giving, you know, importance for some people, what's going to happen is, if you're not going to give a distributed eye contact, what will happen? Others will have an opinion that, that's it. See, some of them will be very happy that you're not looking at them. They'll be maybe playing uh, some games or they'll be on WhatsApp. Some of the students will actually feel bad. Why am I? What's wrong? I'm also fair. Maybe I'm not very good, but I'm also doing okay. Why am why is my why is my lecturer not looking at me? You're actually destroying their morale. So you're you're asking. I mean, you're you're doing it right only, ma'am. But maybe you're saying, how do I handle such heads if yeah. they uh, have a different a different opinion? Uh, sometimes Convince they might your, take a revenge on us. Yes, ma'am. Convince them, ma'am. Convince them. Explain it to them. You know, pull out a lot of uh, you know. If you have a strong case study, ma'am, and prove it concretely, I will send you, ma'am. You mail me. I will send you a lot of uh, case studies. And you can provide them, you know, give it to them as a case study and then that will silence them. Because they shouldn't think that you are telling them or Fatima ma'am is telling them. You should prove it that there is a Harvard case study that says that, you know, we can't show cognitive bias. There's something called as cognitive bias. There's a bias that will actually, you know, where we are, you know, seeing through filters of perception that actually is not right. So once you go to them with that strong case, it will silence them. Right, and maybe they will uh, they will not agree in front of other teachers and staff, but they will just leave you in your style once they realize that. <laughs> all right, that what you what you're saying is really concrete and proved. So sometimes even we have uh, even in a corporate sometimes certain changes we need to make, ma'am. Leaders above us probably sometimes resist change. I'm not saying they're they're wrong. They're right. Someone has to resist us, ma'am. If we don't find resistance, what, what happens is we will not go ahead that extra mile in studying more. So this resistances are good for our growth. 
these these resistances actually you know develop us as you know better professionals ma'am so be thankful to that uh, guy whoever it is he's actually helping <laughs> you in your uh, <laughs> he's indirectly helping oh, you in your growth phase uh, yes ma'am okay sir thank you thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you very much yes ma'am yes thank ma'am can you, you be sir? closer to your mic I'm calling uh, from indore mp state very nice sessions you're welcome okay, ma'am thank sir. you so much thank you ma'am or oh, you just wanted to say that thank you ma'am if you have questions uh, you can ask friends um, hello yes hello hello sir i can hear you sir mohit sir please tell me yes sir uh, i am hardeep singh i am calling from punjab hello sir hello hello uh, you are here sir, i can hear you yes sir yes yes i can hear you sir hardeep singh sir from punjab yes tell us sir uh, yes your session was very good the excellent session during this lockdown of covid i have attended so many sessions but your session is the best one i mm-hmm. have attended so i am very much okay. impressed by you by your words and uh, the things you have told they are very very i i am practical in this thing and i have mm-hmm. learned a lot from and i have called only to thank you you are such a great personality i salute you thank you sir thank you very much sir i am very humble to hear these words but i want to say something sir see uh, we are not in a competition with anybody we are in a competition with ourselves sometimes we what we think is i have to present better than others this was the initial thought i had when i initially you know started my career long back so uh, but you know i also coach people in a corporate okay i am part of a i'm a hr professional but i do conduct a lot of leadership programs and stuff so you know i have a lot of lot of people in my team so i used to think at some point of time these are several years back i mean 8 7 8 years back when i started off coaching leaders i used to think i should coach the best but that has changed sir that has changed it is not about coaching the best you know if every if there is only one star in the sky the sky will be awfully dark so everybody should shine yeah. everybody should shine everybody should right. you know be uh, so i'm repeating that again sir i read this sometime long back if there is only one star in the sky the sky will be awfully dark so there has to be millions of stars and we can be one among those star so um, thank you very much sir thank you so much for this feedback okay sir bye bye sir bye bye thank you thank you sir thank you dell i'm not sure who's that but thank you sir so friends uh, i think we have another 15 more minutes i know we had a lot of food for thought and our focus is more more uh, probably on food for our bellies <laughs> but uh, but i mean this time you can also ask me questions friends and then we can drop off hello sir yes ma'am yes am i audible sir you're audible I'm, ma'am please tell uh, me i'm i'm dr shanti from chennai yes ma'am uh, the uh, the word which i love the most in this world is motivation i uh-huh. i motivate i like to motivate others and uh, i also want to be motivated by others also i mo- mostly motivate myself and my students also but today's session is the best session i ever yeah. attended sir in this lockdown period thank you ma'am lot thank you of much. things many things i learned from you and then i am taking lots of things to my students also i am eager to meet my students now very nice and sir very i nice have one really yes. sir this two session i have ever attended in this pandemic period thank you and then sir i have a question some yes, people ma'am. for like maybe your son or daughter or your student they okay. are not they are very stubborn and not changing not doing okay. anything productive can how to what extent can we change them ma'am uh, in a student phase i think you can definitely change them you know even if you see students who are very hard hearted don't give up on them some of the staff what they do is avela therundave mata or they say things like that they say he will never change this guy will never change that is something that we should never say ma'am or do we sh- we should never look at them with that perception everybody in the student uh, phase is prone to change ma'am it is our persistence that matters as a staff you should never give up as a teaching professional i think you should never give up 
you should think of how your parents didn't give you up give give up on you or your teachers didn't give up on you they never gave up on us ma'am you know how much of mistakes we did did our parents give up on us or our teachers give up on us they persisted so so uh, i think we should be persistent ma'am and once the student knows that see ma'am i'll tell you the secret okay students should not only know that you are there to teach them they should know that you really care about them the moment you are able to care about them they will care about every single word that you're saying if you really demonstrate emotional support for them they will start looking at you like a mother or a sister or an elder sister i think that is where we should be we should not just be there for teaching because we are there for the overall development of them and hence that emotional support when you are giving them maybe a smile maybe there's something wrong at home maybe the student's uh, mother is going through a heart surgery you can ask about her how did the angiogram go or you know you need to emotionally connect but in a very genuine manner when you do that ma'am i'll tell you whatever you tell them those words will become you know bible or whatever for them you know they will take it very seriously yes ma'am and and you have to go with a high level of integrity ma'am that you will give the best you know usually ma'am uh, even before this session uh, i i prayed to lord, to the almighty god i told him lord i don't know what are the questions that are going to come i don't know what type of participants i will have please grant me your grace because when you depend on god i told you the last slide was be interdependent not only on people ma'am people sometimes will fail us but i think the divine uh, source or almighty god will never fail us ma'am because uh, so that little prayer can make a lot of difference so i think uh, before talking to a student you can also tell god lord even as i speak to this person right you also work in his heart right so you will also have divine support when you seek for that if you don't seek for that i'm not sure whether it will really come thank you sir thank you so much i feel You're thank welcome, you is a very small word to express really i don't know i have written so many i have taken down lots of notes today Oh, very nice, ma'am. Very nice. And can just sir, That's can you give some more, some more books which we can buy and ask our students also to must be books. Can you just give some books? Sure, ma'am. Why not? See, uh, I will give you the authors, and probably you can uh, uh, get it. Authors, you can get all books of Dr. Stephen Covey. Okay, okay? Uh, Stephen Covey. All books of his books are good. Uh, there are books by Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker. books by peter drucker peter p e t e r d r u c k e r peter drucker daniel goldman uh, ken blunkard ken blunkard and uh, yeah these are some of the authors that i can think of ma'am uh, peter drucker daniel goldman ken blunkard i mean yeah these are some of the best authors i just mentioned you can i mean with all the authors i just mentioned you'll get like 40 books ma'am I mean, they usually say if you read the books of Peter Drucker, Daniel Goldman, Ken Blanchard, and Stephen Covey, your Harvard MBA is done. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what usually people say. Your MBA is in Harvard will be done. I'm going to order it today, sir. Right now. Very nice. Few super, ma'am. Thank you so nice. much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You've also Thank motivated you, me. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank sir. You. You're welcome, ma'am. Yes, friends. So. I think we have another ten uh, fifteen minutes. I think, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sheikh, sir, Mr. Sheikh, he's waiting for a long time. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir, please go ahead, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't notice that. Sheikh, sir, uh, please go ahead. You may want to unmute yourself, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't notice. <coughs> Sheikh, are you there? Hello. So, friends, if you have any, I'm sure people are waiting still. Some of them are still on the call. Please don't be hesitant to ask. You can ask me, friends, uh, because I'll be willing to answer. or you can write to me i hope you saw my mail id uh, you can also write to me in case
so you can also share uh, if you want to share something you can share uh, i mean i would also love to learn from some of you so uh, let me not go empty handed is what i thought share something friends added on to whatever was taught i mean a lot of learned professionals are there on the call so if you can share something adding on to this that will be very nice it will help all of us on the call and whatever you've learned uh, how can we prepare ourselves better if you want to share something you can share friends Sir, you want to ask questions? I hope all of you have seen my mail ID, right, friends? If you want, I can share it again. So, uh, in case you have not seen my mail ID, this is my mail ID, friends. So, this is my mail ID. You can. you can take it down fleming f l e m i n g dot s at the rate of h c l dot com or that's the person the other one is the personal so anything friends finally uh, anything anybody wants to say i'm sure all of you are hungry okay ma'am seema ma'am is asking about unlearning ma'am i would i would love to answer that uh ma'am unlearning is the process of actually you know uh removing the wrongly learned things that are actually there inside we don't so how does unlearning happen when you actually apply the right things again and again the unlearning automatically happens but you should not apply the wrong thing and the right thing if you apply the wrong thing and the right thing the brain will process both and integrate both inside so you should apply the the only the right right things again and again so for example you have learned that something is outdated you shouldn't be applying that you should only apply the right thing so that the right thing is going to get reinforced again and again and again and your brain will just remove the wrong thing that you have learned long back that's that's what unlearning means ma'am did that answer your question ma'am so friends for for your convenience uh, this wonderful college they have also streamed it live on youtube so that uh, you know in case you had a disturbance in between you can get to watch this on youtube okay it is there on the college portal you can also subscribe to this uh, wonderful institution so uh, on youtube you can yes so i think uh, people i mean uh, friends i think someone wants to ask something friends i don't want to hold you for long if you're hungry uh, <laughs> because i know it's it's going to be one third some of you might be hungry i'm sorry if i'm holding you on this call you can go ahead and have your lunch but if you want to ask me something please go ahead so i think uh we have a question in chat box from uh, mr vikri what is the difference between unlearning and forgetting what is the difference between unlearning and forgetting okay forgetting uh, happens for all of us and it it happens uh, you know by way of a unconscious level also whereas unlearning we can also do it consciously we can try to do it consciously because we are consciously applying only the right learning repeatedly so that the wrong learning is not going to surface at any point of time forgetting is a unconscious process we know we we don't deliberately forget you know it it happens over a period of time uh, whereas unlearning is consciously done not necessarily always consciously done it can also be consciously done you can take the effort consciously to unlearn so that you know 
it doesn't interfere with your uh, updated knowledge so i think we are uh, we have just a few more minutes sir uh, so if anybody wants to share any final words you can share and we can all go and have a wonderful lunch i'm looking forward to <laughs> any more question anything to share from the participants so friends thank you so much for uh, being wonderful participants some of you asked me a lot of questions and uh, i hope this day was beneficial so attend a lot of programs like this friends not just this program read a lot and i hope you remember whatever was covered so action on it right today right don't procrastinate it if you action on it right today that will be really good for all of us if you procrastinate it or put it off to another day uh, it will it will not have that initial fire right so all the very best to all of you connect with me at any point of time i have given you my mail id right so thank you so much i'm thankful to sir dana lakshmi ma'am for the, to the principal and this wonderful institution for giving me this opportunity so hope uh, you all have a wonderful uh, career ahead and uh, you know the world is going to be a better place very soon friends let's looking for look forward to that Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, we got a lot of comments, a uh, lot of positive okay, comments sir. for pumping a lot of uh, positivity today. Okay. I, I also I, got I, a lot of positivity back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, sir. Yes, sir. You were about to say something. I have. You said you started with something. I'm sorry. You were about to say something, sir. I'm. Sir, no, nothing, sir. Nothing, sir. It's just uh, it was a wonderful session. It was wonderful. Okay. Wonderful session. As a Santi Moon said. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It was very wonderful. Very, very, very nice. Yeah. A lot of positive to hear. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, with this uh, word, yeah. sir, we can uh, formally wind up the session. I would like to thank all the people behind the success of this program. I thank our HOD, Dr. Rajivan sir, for giving me a chance to present the validity of this. Technology enabled us to connect us with all the fields of work in all the situations. Technology is everywhere. If there is a sun, there is a moon. If there is a good, there is a bad. Let's focus on the good. Personally, I hope technology also has a, its own value. It connected us, even we are from various places. We are going to the new paradigms in behavioral management for the past four days. First day with uh, Mr. Ramachandra Ganesan sir, who enlightened us how people behave in various situations and how to handle them. Second day, Meenakshi Mam was with us, sharing things in a different perspective and enabled us. To learn new together. On third day, Mr. Sriyan sir, he narrowed the channel focusing students' behavior and handling. Them. Finally, today it was amazing by Mr. Plumbing sir, uh, to pump a lot of our uh, positive energy. Thank you, thank you for uh, all the participants. Sorry, thank you for uh, all the presenters, all the uh, guests. Uh, finally, uh, all are uh, coming together. At the central point, behavioral management. I hope a transformation has happened among us relating to the behavior and the handling them in various uh, situations, in good times, in bad times, whatever it is. I would like to thank our college management for permitting us to have such a wonderful people among us in this faculty development, uh, faculty development program. As we know already, leader is a person who says, "Come on, let's uh, do it together." I would like to thank. Uh, such an amazing leader our principal dr c asok sir who is always supporting us for conducting such program whenever we ask permission for conducting any program he simply nod okay granted thank you sir 
Next, uh, our uh, head of the department, Dr. Rajshagaran sir, who is always supporting us from the beginning, uh, who is the mentor of us. Uh, thank you, thank you sir, so much sir, for constantly supporting and enriching us. Mathematics says 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Management says 1 plus 1 is more than 2. Synergy gives great results. Teamwork always gives more than expected. I would like to thank my fellow colleague, Dr. Maheshwari Ma'am, Mrs. Nalishu Ma'am, Dr. Kokila Ma'am, Mr. Marichalam Sir, Mr. Uh, Jacob Malan Sir, and Mr. Uh, Nagarajan Sir for your uh, willing cooperation and guidance. A scholar says, man stop learning only when he dies. Especially, we academicians are lifetime learners. But our purpose of learning is somewhat different. When compared to our learning is towards building society. I take this opportunity to thank all the participants, the builders of the society, for being with us for all the four days, spending your valuable time, passion, listening, and active, actively interacting. Thank you all. And I extend my sincere thanks to Mr. Venkatesh sir and Mr. Vijay Kumar sir of our Department of uh, Visual Communication who are working behind the screen, taking care of our uh, technical aspects of uh, being live on YouTube. Thank you sir. Finally, I thank uh, Dr. Marim sir for uh, your technical guidance and support. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Manamba. Stay home, stay safe, keep learning. Thank you. Thank you sir.